James, how have uh, Sean and Will handled things from sort of a, a leadership, uh, body language, chemistry, all those things that sometimes when you have a quarterback dynamic could be a negative? How have they handled it going through this part of the season? You know, uh, obviously it's, it's been challenging at times, but I think they both have handled it really well. I thought, you know, Sean – um, when this when this all got started, I thought he handled it really well, not only with Will but with the team. And then Will was put in a tough spot, and and you know and I think he's responded well. So um, you know the 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 thing that helps is they have a they have a pretty close relationship. Um, so I think that helps. Um, but but they've handled it they've handled it you know pretty well. It's obviously it's been hard. Um, but they've they've handled it pretty well. I've had a number of conversations with both of them. My own unmute problem. Tyler Donahue, Ben Jones, you're under. Hi, James. Uh, thanks for the time. Surprised to see you here. Thought you might be watching the end of this Ravens game because Trace McSorley's in, just threw his first career touchdown after he threw his first career pass in a regular season game. He told us after the Citrus Bowl in Orlando that his playing career was not done. There were a lot of skeptics, though, about him still playing quarterback after Penn State. What's your reaction to him getting this opportunity and, and making the most of it so, so far? Yeah, it's just like I, you know, I told the Ravens. It's just like, like I told everybody else. He's just he's one of those guys that's going to find a way. You know, he wasn't highly recruited out of high school at the position. Um, you know, got here and, and right away kind of earned everybody's respect. Uh, obviously had a great career and, uh, you know, he's just, he's a winner. He, he did it in high school. He did it in college. So it doesn't surprise me at all that he's, he's doing it again now, um, you know, in the NFL. Um, you know, I've had a, a number of conversations. I know a bunch of the coaches on the Ravens uh, staff had a number of conversations about him last year when they were trying to, you know, decide whether he was going to make the team. Um, so it, it, it doesn't surprise me at all. Actually, I was coming off the practice field and, and uh, Chris told me, uh, Trace, Trace just threw his first touchdown pass. And I was kind of asking the situation in the game and what the score was and those types of things. Um, but yeah, I, as you guys know, I'm a, I'm a big Trace McSorley, uh, you know, fan. I got a very close relationship with his mom and dad and his sister as well, who used to babysit for us. Um, so nothing with that guy, you know, surpri surprises me one bit. Ben Jones, Greg Pickle, you're on deck. Hey, James, how's it going? Good, Ben. How are you? I'm good. Uh, living without your family, what's the biggest domestic thing you've had to pick up? I mean, are you cooking for yourself at night? I mean, what is the thing that you've got to learn how to do these days? Yeah, you know, not not a whole lot. You know, I was I was single for a long time, so you know, I, I did those things. But it has been a long time. I think the biggest thing is, you know, I, you know, with campus shut down and nobody around, I pretty much wear the same sweatsuit every single day. So that that helps. I can wear it for a good week or so before, uh, you know, before uh, you know, I have to do a whole lot. And then the good thing is, I can put it on the loop like the players and you know, put it in the loop and have the equipment guys wash it. So I'm only wearing about a sweatsuit. So, so that helps. Um, but, but I, you know, I have done laundries on, on some Thursday nights. It's not like making dinner cause I'm here every night till late and back in early in the morning. So it's uh Thursday night, we get home you know fairly early and uh, usually a, a couple um, staff members may come over and watch, you know, watch a little football with me. I do uh I, I wash some some underwear and some socks, and uh, you know that's that's about it. I usually FaceTime with my family as as much as I can, um, you know. But that's usually a huge family night for me. So you know, I think the the thing is is uh, you know just trying to figure out when my family's going to be able to come back. I don't I don't know when that's going to be, you know, with uh, you know with obviously the virus. And with, uh, you know, with sickle cell and there really not being anywhere in state college or in center County that can treat for sickle cell. Um, that's what we've been discussing a lot as a family is just, I don't, I don't know when they're going to be able to come back. Um, so, um, you know, try, try to, try to spend as much time with them FaceTime and zoom and, 
and things like that as, as I can. Greg Pickles, Perth, you're on deck. Good evening, Coach. Thanks for your time. I believe we saw a couple other offensive line combinations last week, not necessarily new ones, but you've been moving some guys in and out there. How would you evaluate the progress of that group? And where do you think you're at in terms of finding a five you want to stick with versus rotating guys in during games? I think we're going to continue to rotate. There's been guys that have been playing well and have, have, have earned opportunities to, to be in there, whether that is a sixth offensive lineman on the field or whether that's you know, giving guys a blow, uh, you know, so they're not playing the entire game um, and, and guys have earned it. So, you know, I, I think we've been playing better uh, up front the last couple of weeks and running the ball better and, and those types of things. So, uh, you know, I think you know, you'll continue to see guys, you know, guys get some opportunities. Thank you, Padre. Can you buy us here on deck? Hey, Coach, appreciate the time this afternoon, this evening. Sorry. You, you too, Parker. With, uh, with Devin Ford now back and, you know, obviously him have, him not having played in a, in a full game uh, since, I believe, week four. And with the kind of game that Kevon Lee had, does that cause you to kind of reevaluate your running back rotation at all? Not not really, because we're going to need both of them. You know, um, you know, last week it was Kevon carrying most of the lot, you know, most of the load and Kaziah playing as well. Um, so now you have, you know, you have Devin and Kevon both both being able to play and, and there's some, there's some, you know, there's some schemes that probably fit Devin a little bit better. And there's some schemes that probably fit uh, Kiva on a little bit better, you know, so, um, so uh, we're going to need both of them. I mean, very rarely can you play with just one back, you know, in major college football or, or the NFL anymore. So we're going to, we're going to need both of them. But, but obviously, but obviously based on what Kiva has done, you know, you feel a lot more comfortable now. You know, with with him being in there on a on a uh, on a more significant basis. Tobias Wilborn and Nate Bauer, you're on deck. Coach, I'm I'm pretty sure you're probably glad that we're not asking who the quarterback is. Um, but how does that help a team? And does it still matter for a team to know this is the guy? Yeah, I, I think it you know helps. Obviously, you know we had you know we had you know the situation last year, and it you know it worked out well for us. And you know, but I think the reality is we're gonna we're gonna need both of them. You know, um, you know, like we did last week. You know, they both played and they both you know did some good things and and it, at critical moments. So you know we're gonna need that again and continue to protect the football. So, um, but yeah, you don't you don't really want. Um, you know, a, a quarterback controversy, or you don't really want a situation where you're having to go back and forth because obviously that means, you know, something's not going well. Nate Bauer and Tyler Donahue, you're on deck. Hey, James, how are you? Good, Tyler. Uh, excuse me. Good, Nate. How are you? Good. Hey, um, a, a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned um, having the first full team meeting at Haluba Hall and, and shifting three locker rooms down to two. Have the protocols that have been in place been fluid through the course of the season? Um, you know, CDC has new guidelines for quarantine and so on and so forth. I mean, I guess, has there been a negotiation there? Has there been flexibility uh, and, and an evolution in how those things have been handled? Uh, yes, I, I would say that that's fair, Nate. Um, you know, but we have taken a very conservative approach from the beginning and it has worked, you know, we, we've gone another week now. We, we've still, we still have false positives, but we've gone another week now keeping everybody safe, you know, so our, our protocols have been really effective in, in keeping our team as safe as possible. Again, you know, uh, up to this point, you know, uh, I keep saying that could change quickly. Um, but, but our protocols have been really good, but we've also been very conservative, probably more conservative than most. And that's, you know, philosophically, uh, here that's, that's Penn state. That's our doctors. That's, you know, the state of Pennsylvania, that's center County, you know, that's, that's the university that that's, that's all of it. It's, it's the approach that we took. You know, when our priority from the beginning, when, you know, when we decided to play football in the Big Ten was we were going to do everything we possibly could to keep everybody healthy. But, um, you know, not having, you know, uh, in-person meetings and, 
not having full practices. Uh, you know, we were split practices as long as, you know, um, as long as anybody, you know, I'm aware of, um, you know, we obviously didn't have any spring ball, you know, there's, it's pretty interesting when you look in the big 10, um, you know, I think Northwestern had 12 spring ball practices and I think Indiana had eight, um, you know, and then you look at, you know, the people that didn't and, and it's, and it's not one thing, it's everything, you know, and it, and it all adds up and, um, you know, um, we, we've done a really good job with COVID up, up to this point, and we're, we're, we're proud of that. Last two questions. We'll start with Tyler Donahue and finish off with my friend. James, we had uh, Caden Wallace on a call earlier today. Um, it sounds like he's gaining confidence week by week. What convinced you and Coach Troutwine and Kirk Shiraka to, to insert him as the starting right tackle, and how have you seen him progress in the week since? Well, he's been a guy that we we're really excited about as a true freshman. You know, he's a massive, you know, young man with really light feet and he's smart. He's conscientious. Um, you know, players were talking about him and, um, you know, it's just kind of building some of the techniques and fundamentals and understanding the speed and the strength and the size at this level. So, you know, he was one of those guys that was right on the edge of playing as a true freshman, which is unusual uh, as an offensive lineman. Um, and, and, you know, and kind of throughout, you know, a non-traditional uh, camp. And, um, you know, we just felt like, you know, he, he created some flexibility, um, you know, with Will, you know. So, um, you know, obviously you would have loved to have been able to go through, you know, a, a typical camp and a spring ball with him, but, He's a guy that we've been excited about, you know, really since he stepped on campus. And Mark Brennan will have our last question. James, how have Theo and Brenton uh, kind of responded to to a, a, a greater greater roles? And even in the little things like blocking, I noticed that you really weren't afraid to go to two tight ends, even though you had two, two young guys who I assume didn't block a lot in high school. Yeah, you know, I, I think Tyler's done a really good job with those guys and um, – you know, Brenton's always been, you know, physical. And, and even if you remember when, before we lost Pat, you know, we were using Brenton really in that role, um, you know, and, and Theo, you know, he's, he's kind of an unusual, you know, freshman cause he's, you know, he's, you know, you know six foot six, 250 pounds and strong. And, um, you know, he's done, has done some, done some good things. So, but, but on the other end of the spectrum market, you know, it's, it's obviously, uh, an unusual year for everybody. And, you know, we're depending on a lot of those guys, um, you know, in those situations, which in my six years here, we, we really have it, you know, we've, uh, we've been able to have, you know, more of a veteran team. And when I say veteran, it may not be seniors, but you know, more experienced players with young guys that you're able to get some, some work in uh, from time to time as, as the, as the year goes on. Thank you very much, Coach. Thanks everybody. Hi, everybody.